jumbo, everyone. Well, Princess the Bear here. We're back at Animal King. It's time for breakfast in the jungle. It's very hard for us to get up early for breakfast, especially on Bear's birthday week. But we are here and we are celebrating. Let's go find some tusk. Be sure to enjoy all of the animals without They're... eating them. Wait, no. You heard the girl. One sip. This is one sip of the jungle juice. It's basically pog juice. It's so good. It's a three sip cup. I give it four and a half out of five pog juices, jungle juices. Yeah, jungle juices. That's a princess sees item. You have to have it when you come to Disney World. It's just a small portion, but it's unlimited. So drink to your heart's content. A morning of the juice of the jungle is not to be denied. Cheers. Pineapple, orange, and wild. Is there anything better? Probably not. Four and a half out of five points. I'm only the Princess of Strawberry though. This time. Something about pog juice and mimosa is just feels like a morning safari ride. Nice and refreshing. It is on the pricey side, but most of mimosas nowadays are, especially when you don't get unlimited. But if you really want a mimosa, you can't go wrong with this one. Three and a half out of five points. We have the Yumu Jungle Juice. That is set Gavaco, which is not vegan, it's meant for the princess. And then pork juice and a peach schnapps liqueur. So it should be a bunch of juice with a little bite. Ooh. That'll knock you out as fast as standing downwind from Fungo. Strong but good. Four out of five plus. take a while to be in forked. But let's let's see if we, we can balance all this. Got a nice earthy and tangy flavor. I am feeling the spice of the princess. Uh, it's about a 1.5 out of 10 on the spice scale. But a spicy salad was definitely not what I expected about eating. I expected something more like savory and mild. And that is not it. If you're looking for something like explode your mouth first thing in the morning, 
Why not start with greens? Three to five pounds. And we have some black eyed peas. I believe you get these during dinner as well. It's been a minute since we've had dinner, but I remember tasty black eyed peas. They are the same ones. Really tasty. Black eyed peas salad. Not too like overpowering like the flavor. It's just nice, like smooth. I think it would fit any palette. I really like it. It's got like a, a hint of a smokiness to it as well. I will give it a three and a half out of five black eyed peas. It is really good. You know, I've never really considered black eyed peas for breakfast. It's always been like a dinner food for me. But always have to try new things. You really should put more black eyed peas at home. I do like black eyed peas. I just want the time it takes to cook them. Impatient man. Ooh. Oh. You give me like pasta salad vibes, but with black eyed peas. Chill. But it's a surprise. It's not a bad thing. I kind of like it, honestly. It's like a hearty bean salad for breakfast. Three and a half out of five plus. So this is a tandoori tomato, not to be confused with the tandoori tomato stack. This tandoori tomato actually is vegan, but there is a stack one that has milk in it, so definitely make sure that you check when you come here because it can change. Let's go ahead and try this. I need a knife, actually. It could use a little bit of salt. It's a very lightly seasoned tomato. And I don't usually put salt on my tomatoes, but I feel like this one needs some of that flavor glitter. I'm gonna give it two out of five tomatoes. It's okay. I'm never gonna say no to anything tandoori spiced. And a tomato actually sounds quite pleasant. What do you think? They probably need more seasoned. See a little bit on top here, but like, I want a punch out of flavor. Make sure you pick out one where you can see the seasoning on top because that flavor down with tomato, like slightly roasted. No, it's not like Persian roasted, but like a roasted tomato that nice warm in the morning. That tastes like breakfast to me. It gives me like English breakfast vibes, but African. Four and five. Plain roasted. I actually think it's sweet potato based on the color, but let's see. It's not a sweet potato. It's just a very, very cooked tomato. I like the spices. It feels like it's lacking something. Like there's, there's not enough punch. But it's like almost there. It's a potato either way, but it's it just needs a little bit more. I would expect a little bit more flavoring from Tusker House. I will give it a two out of five potatoes. If I'm ever gonna eat any potato, my preference is always gonna be a breakfast potato. Not a baked potato, not potato skin, not potato chips, breakfast potatoes. They can be wedges, they can be cubes. I just love them for breakfast. Look at that. That's roasty. We're almost the same complexion. Mmm. Nice and crisp on the outside, soft on the inside. That's the way you do a potato. 3.75 out of 5 pounds. bear, we start off in the pastry section, which had this very unique looking savannah style sliced bread. Near as I can tell it's a sliced bread. Thank you. The uh, bread pastry section is really, really crowded with labels staggered. Well, there are some vegan things in there, so make sure you're paying attention. It's very easy to pick the wrong thing up there if you're not careful. But I want you to be sure to ask if you're not sure. Uh, all I got to go with this was some orange marmalade. And we're just gonna spread that on there like the morning sun. That one was vegan. I just definitely just plain size bread, but when they say orange marmalade, they're saying orange marmalade with like a capital O. A big, big, big burst of just citrus in your mouth. But sweet. Very good. A little sliced bread, just for aesthetics, a solid four out of five. Here 
we have the zebra coffee bread. The zebra for the striped colors. And supposedly coffee. It smells like coffee. Strong coffee flavor, but then it's got this sweet crumble on top that sort of balances it out. Imagine like a little espresso with like a little bit of sweet milk. That's what that is. It's very tasty. And if I didn't have so much to eat, I would gobble this entire thing. Four and a half out of five plus. Next up, we have a chocolate twist. Just a normal breakfast pastry, chocolate inside, a little bit of icing on top, some chocolate chips baking at the bottom. I never understood like super sweet pastries for breakfast, but each their own. I like that the chocolate is down the middle and not like filled. That way it's like, it's not a chocolate overload. It's still mostly pastry. It's balanced in all things. Three and a half out of five plus. Last up for my pastry course today is a guava tart. A nice guava pastry. Got some powdered sugar on top. The guava filling. The guava is a strong flavor. So I can, with the guava, I can understand not filling it. But it's still pretty hollow. It's like Pooh Bear's Cave in there. Interesting. The flavor's still good though. Three out of five plus. So we have, by request, a plate of gluten-free vegan Mickey waffles. Now, by some miracle, these came maybe 40 seconds after I requested them from our server. I was very suspect. So you see this missing ear here? This is because I made Bear try it just to make sure it was the right kind before I bit into it because I was, it seems sus to me. Tell me in the comments if that seems sus to you. Like, you ask for off-menu Mickey waffles and you get them 40 seconds, I swear, 40 seconds. Here. Crazy. Now I'm gonna take this one that's already been sacrificed and dip it because I'm a dipper and not a pourer. Definitely tastes gluten-free and great with the syrup. Mickey shape all the things. Superior waffle. We all know that Mickey shaped waffles are superior. So, these ones get a two and a half out of five Mickey waffles because of the quickness and they're also not hot. They're lukewarm. So were these just sitting out? Did they just use Chef Mike? What happened to that? Inquiring minds want to know. I got me some um, oatmeal. I feel like it's part of my buffet tradition to get oatmeal. And the brown sugar here was labeled plant-based, so I'm not worried about the brown sugar here like I was at Chef P. I put maybe too much brown sugar in this whole thing changed color. It's a little soupier, but it's definitely better than Chef Mickey's oatmeal. And I did put too much brown sugar, but I still like it. I'll give it out of five oatmeal. Nice, delicious breakfast oatmeal. It's like oat gruel. It's almost like punishment. But I like oatmeal, so it's a terrible punishment. Brown sugar definitely helps. It is oatmeal for the most compatible palates. If you understand my meaning. Two and a half out of five oats. Booty with shakalaka. I'm interested. It doesn't taste like impossible. It just tastes like a nice, like, pie. Spice perfectly. I think this is my favorite thing that I've had so far. I'll give it a four out of five impossibles. I kind of wish I could do it with, like, lentils or something instead. I think that would be just as good. Imagine what this is why most of the plant-based folks would come here for this 
than possible a booty. You know, if you don't like alt meat, obviously it's something you might want to skip. But this like unique offering, which you can't really get a lot of places around Magic or Walt Disney World. Period. We're here for it. Perfect blend of spices. It's sort of like the Impossible just soaks up perfectly, so you don't taste like you're eating the traditional Impossible. It feels like breakfast. I would give that a five out of five pause. I was plant based. I would come here for this. Feisty. Now I will be the judge of that with raisins. Interesting. And nuts. And nuts? Yeah. Oh, that is a nut. Three nuts. Very confusing array of textures between the raisins and nuts and the green beans. It's about as feisty as a deceased Disney parent. I even like it the spice though. It's like a one out of the spice scale, very front of the mouth. But it's definitely there. I don't know what the trend is with spicy plant based food in this restaurant, but. Flavors are there, and I cannot complain about the flavor. Three and a half out of five points. in the kids and the adults section, the potato barrel, which we do not call tater tot because that is trademarked. Perfectly crisp, what you would expect from a tot at Disney. I enjoyed it, takes me back to Woody's lunchbox. I will give it four out of five tots. It is worth it, and they have ketchup, but I don't want ketchup. I either want mustard or I want something fancy, like a curry sauce or something. They don't have that. I can't call them tater tots. But I can still call them tots. We dedicate this to our one and only Sailor Taylor Moon. Just as crispy and just as short. Standard potato barrel, nice and crispy, soft inside. A little salty, but not bad. Two and a half out of five plus. The bottom of the pot, jasmine rice, which is fine. This is one place where I know I can get consistently tasty rice, and as a Persian, we are very judgy about our rice. I just dream about this rice. Like, Persian rice is the best, most superior rice. But if I had to say, like, another rice that was right below that, it would be this rice. I like this more than sushi rice. This is incredible rice. I would give it five out of five. It's a princess city's item. Put stuff on top of it, eat it by itself. Make it sweet, make it tangy. Do whatever you want to it. It is versatile and it is tasty. Nice, healthy breakfast serving of jasmine rice. And yes, you can eat breakfast or rice with any meal. Any meal. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, second lunch, dinner, dinner, second dinner, even dessert, because rice pudding is a thing. The most surprising part about getting rice here in Tokyo is not good, is how often other places mess it up. Four and a half and five minutes. So I got very excited for overnight oats, because I love overnight oats. I've been making a lot for breakfast lately. The princess saved me with the handy dandy allergy guide because these overnight oats have milk in them. Now, normally when we get them into like universal, it's almond milk or goat milk. Thank you. This is cow's milk, which would incapacitate me for the day. So 
I'm only gonna take a couple small bites, but that's gonna require some magic pills. Because most of us want us want me to live. We got a whole day at Animal Kingdom. Oh. What surprised me was there's basically an overnight oats bar up there. And they have everything here you can get here, like the coriander spice granola, the jam, the yogurt, and the oats separately up there. So you can build your own bowl, basically. I just got one of the pre-made all-in ones. Gonna try to get a little bit of everything in here without uh, murderizing myself. <laughs> that coriander and the granola hits strong. But actually goes really well with like cutting out some of the sweetness of the jam and like the creaminess of the oats. It's balanced well. This is something that could almost fill you up on its own with how like thick and chunky it is. I'm actually glad that I can eat all of it because it is really good. 3.75 out of 5 bucks. What always gets me about Tusker House over every other Disney buffet is the number of like uniquely seasoned items that they have. There's like a base Disney buffet grilled breakfast, dinner, and lunch. Like, you're gonna get your pastries, you're gonna get your pancakes. There's usually like one or two things that is specialty, but like Tusker House always has like the most unique spread of any buffet on Walt Disney property of things. Now this one, caught me by surprise. It's a beet and orange seasoned salmon rolled. Now I assume it's meant to go on the bagels they have up there, which I didn't get. They also have two kinds of cream cheese, both the strawberry and regular, both are not plant-based. And I'm lactose intolerant. Both of those would probably kill me. So we're just gonna do this salmon all by itself. I don't like beets. Do I like beet flavored salmon? It's got a very interesting flavor. The beet gives it like a very like strong earthiness. And that sort of goes well with the fish, but it is a very strong like smoked fish that you would normally put on like a bagel. What a flavor. It's interesting, and if you're a, favor, if you're a fan of like locked bagels, I think you should give this a try. Three out of five. Bucks. Next up, we have the traditional smoked salmon with dill. This is what you would normally see on like a locked bagel smothered with cream cheese. They have a ton of cream cheese, so this is your vacation. If you want to go nuts on a cream cheese, you do it. I just want to live. You live how you want to live. Mm. Nice and fresh. Doesn't taste like it's been sitting out for hours. That's what you want a nice smoked salmon. Four out of five points. Have a good day. Supervising. Are you going to sit down and eat? Are you eating today? No? You're not going to eat? Make sure you get some food before you leave today. Make sure you get some food before you leave today. Don't just, just, don't just work. Too much work does not make for a happy mouth. It's all you? You want it? <laughs> What is labeled the Simba waffle, but it's actually a Nala waffle. If you look kind of close, I guess you could argue that it looks like Simba. I think it looks more like Nala. The princess looks, looks more like Nala. We do have pancakes. But I have limited stomach space, so I skipped the pancakes and I got waffles. Yes, yes, I know, but that does not mean I'm converting to the waffle fandom. I am still a pancake diehard. I'm gonna give a little pour. You guys love the drip, right? There we go. Probably way too much. I'm just gonna cut right in there. Nice crispy outside. Get that dill off of there. A little bite. Nice, springy, consistent, and better. Both. Best of all, not raw. They've gotten us once with that. Not here, obviously. But some other resorts are remain nameless. But it's a solid Disney waffle. 
all the best things are Simba shaped. Three out of five plus. They're all Simba shaped, but it's not a Simba waffle, it's a Nala waffle. Right. Exactly. Okay. Here we have the uh, curry. Now this is normally prepared with the rice, the jasmine rice the princess got. This is already tried that, I just would have skipped over it. But it's got a nice array of vegetables. It needs to be well cooked down. And uh, children, adults, Disney adults, Disney elders, eat your veggies. There is a little bit of meat there as well, a little bit of beef. But it's not all veggies. It's got a nice flavor. And I can see how excellent that would be on the right. If you want a more savory part of your breakfast, just go straight for the curry. Skip everything else. Four to five. Wouldn't be a Disney breakfast if you didn't go straight for the meats. I know a lot of you are hardcore carnivores. You're not trying to eat veggies. You don't want rice. You want eggs and bacon and sausage for breakfast. Don't worry, the bears got you. Lights right here. I don't know why I'm speaking in third person. I hate when people do that. But either way, definitely a spice breakfast sausage, which is a regular sausage. It's a little on the greasy side, which I hate, but it is breakfast sausage. Give it two out of five points. And I went easy on the bacon. I got one tiny piece of baby bacon because I got more things to get. I'm even the carbon station. More things to go. I would say actually better than the standard Disney bacon. Because it's actually a bit crunchy while still not being like overcooked. It's perfectly cooked. And with the mass amount they cook that bacon, sometimes I worry it's either undercooked or overcooked. That one's just right. Three out of five points. What they call the uh, the mealy pop. It looks like a corn based like grits dish with like uh, it has chocolate in it. Uh, but you got some veggies in here. Looks very creamy. I'm glad I already took some lactate. I'm not gonna do too much of this because of just how colorful it looks. But I'm gonna grab some of these veggies in here at the very least. It's both egg and corn grits. Very creamy, like a savory sweet taste, like a sweet and tangy sort of like grits. Think like. Cajun grits, but not too spicy. That is three and a half out of five pounds. I didn't learn how to make that at home. Even though I'm getting vegetarian things all day, vegetarians did not forget about you. There is a vegetable frittata up there, so just an egg, little quiche sort of deal. Filled with veggies, topped with cheese. That should be the key to all of your hearts. Very eggy. And the ricotta, I expect a lot of egg, but it's like missing the balance of the veggies. There are veggies on top, but there's not a ton on the inside. Like, there's some, but it's very spread out. It's like 80% egg, 20% veggie. I was expecting greater things. So it's kind of a disappointment. One of the first so far, but. I don't like that. Two out of five balls. So here we have the shashuka, which is a little runny egg with the shashuka sauce and a little piece of bread. So it's like a little runny egg. Uh, our friends at Diz Life of Ours, June, if you're watching this, I know sometimes you sneak in the comments. I'm not sorry that you gotta watch this. So I'm gonna go ahead and break some of that yolk, get some of that tomato, place it on the bread, and take a whole bite. Savory tomato with the, the yuca based tomato based yuca sauce with the egg yolk on the bread. It's peak. That's like, I know that it's like the weirdest looking thing up there. There's a lot of people that stop when I pick it up wondering what it was, a bit confused. 
if you're eating one slightly baked curry, a spread buffet, not losing anything, I suggest you try it. I love this. Four and a half out of five plus. Remember when we had Shachuca California Grill? I, I do remember when they had the vegan Shachuca California Grill. It was like forever ago at this point. Like five years, four years. Four years. Bring back brunch, you cowards. So, I finally made it to the carving station. Feels like that took forever. Now, there were some things on the buffet that I didn't get. There was the hard-boiled eggs. Wasn't really the mood. And I already had a couple egg dishes. They also had scrambled eggs. Standard dizzy scrambled eggs. Not missing a whole lot there. But just went straight for the meats. So, they have a, a cooked, like a roasted ham that they carved fresh up there. And I got this. And a little small with the pieces. But this is a limited buffet, so you can always go back to get more if you like it. It's nice and juicy. Looked beautiful when he was carving it. Nice suckling ham. Not greasy. The flavor not overcooked, not undercooked. This meat can roast their meats. Four out of five points. Also the carving station that's sort of hidden, where well, they do have it, is the uh, andouille sausage. You can get an even spicier sausage in the sausage patty uh, up there at the carving station, if you so desire. Now they also have a sweet and spicy mustard. There's no plant-based symbol on it, so I don't want for the princess, but if you're feeling up to it and you want to make the trap, it's like tucked in between the carving station. There's a make your own omelet station up there as well. Uh, you just have a little bowl of mustard. Like, literally just sitting up there by itself. It looks a little lonely, actually. We're gonna dip this in there. And then we're gonna take a bite without it as well. That is a special kind of mustard. It is actually kind of spicy. I like the spiciest thing I've had so far today. It's like a three and a half, four on the spice scale. It goes well with like the smoky meats. And then just the sausage by itself. If I have to pick the sausage, that's my favorite. That one's nice and like roasted, so it's not just like sitting in grease. It's sitting in there cut fresh on the board. I prefer that one. I would give the sausage on its own. Four to five claws. Same rating with the mustard, but don't forget about the mustard. That's a treat that really should be like on the bar, but not tucked in the corner where you can't see it. We have dessert. Yes, breakfast dessert. Now they do have the standard array of like veggies, apples, cut fruit. I just went straight for what is the like unique um, breakfast dessert option, which is an African, I hope I'm saying this right, African Malva banana and blueberry bread pudding. Quite the name. It doesn't look like a whole lot up there. It just looks like a whole bunch of mess that's like green and orange. But we're all about the inside, man. not, not out, out to your looks. Looks are great, but it's what's inside that counts. I'd put a ring on it. It's that perfect amount of breakfast sweet, like the bread pudding where it's not like soaked with sugar, but it's still the sweetness of the banana that comes through. That is a nice end cap to breakfast. Honestly, I find it hard to find any place that does breakfast for a buffet better than Tusker. And this just sort of solidifies that. That is five out of five claws. It's on a very consistent list. Do not leave breakfast without getting the African bread pudding. Tusker breakfast is still top tier Disney buffet breakfast. I mean, if you, there's not a lot of choices for breakfast here, let's be honest. But if I have to choose between like Rainforest Cafe, some sort of quick service, Starbies or Tusker, and I'm not trying to run to Fop or the Safari. It's a no-brainer. It's Tusker. Yes. I think the value you get for this breakfast at forty-five dollars, all the options they have, the unique options, is one value for buffet I can actually go to bat for. 
The only thing I have to say for vegans, if you come to Tusker House, whether it's breakfast or lunch dinner, be sure that you double check not only the allergy guide, but the line and cross-reference the two because you will see conflicting information and you do need to question that. Yes. But I don't know what you guys think. When was the last time you came to Tusker Breakfast and why haven't you been here yet? Let us know in the comments below. We are, of course, your number one choice in foodie infotainment. So if there's anything else you'd like to see us do, of course, the comments can place to find us. Hit the notification bell. You can see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. And if you don't comment, Bear might yeet himself into Donald. And then Donald will have a quack attack. And then Bear will end up, I don't know. I don't know what... Donald having a quack attack is unpredictable. Let's be real. Me and Donald are going to run this park.